Good evening. Welcome to the regular meeting of the Lewiston City Council for November 10th. Uh, we'll call this meeting to order. First order of business of the Pledge of Allegiance will be led tonight in the pledge by Councillor Collins. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Next on the agenda is citizen comments. This is an opportunity for citizens to address the council on agenda items or other items they wish to bring to the attention of the city council. Citizens are encouraged to discuss operational issues in advance with the city manager. And in consideration of others wishing to speak, please limit your remarks to three minutes. Do we have any citizen comments tonight? Okay, well, apparently not. Uh, next up, public hearings and presentations. We have two public hearings tonight. Uh, the first one is public hearing VA 04-2014. This is the request by the Means Building Company for the vacation of narrow strips of the public rights of way for 4th Street and D Street to eliminate encroachments of the Means Building into the rights of way. Who do we have to introduce this? Mr. Hayhurst? Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Councilman. As you said, Mr. Mayor, this is a vacation request uh, for a, a section of right away from the Means Building Company, LLC. They're represented tonight by David Stegner. He's in the audience tonight. Uh, the Means Building Company is requesting the vacation of narrow strips of the public rights of way for 4th Street and D Street to eliminate the encroachment of the Means Building into the rights of way. It appears that when the Means Building was built in 1906, it was located with approximately 15 inches of the east wall in the 4th Street right of way and 3 inches of the south wall in the D Street right of way. To eliminate these encroachments, the proposal is to have the city vacate the west 1.5 feet of 4th Street between D and Capitol Streets and vacate that part of the north 0.5 feet of D Street adjacent to the lot that the Means Building occupies. Let me show you some location drawings and a couple of photos to get us a little bit more focused in here. This is the downtown area. Uh, this is D Street, Main Street, Capitol Street. Uh, here's where the city offices are. Uh, here's where the library is. The Means Building is this building right in this area. The uh, right of way requested to be vacated is a one and a half foot strip right here down this side and a half a foot strip along here. Here's a photo. This is the Means Building. And we're, I'm standing in the middle of D Street with this photo looking towards the north along 4th Street. So this side, this side of the building here is where the foot and a half uh, vacation request is to vacate that foot and a half of 4th Street. If you can see it, there's a, I've got a red line in there. And so it would barely be, would, the new right of way line would be just barely outside of the existing wall there. 15 inches is, of course, is very close to the 18 inches being requested to be vacated. So basically the right of way line will end up being the, um, the building wall line. Here's a photo standing in Capitol Street looking towards the Mean Building, so Means Building. So I'm looking south in this photo, uh, looking along the same uh, 
side there where it'll be a foot and a half will be vacated if it's if it's uh, approved and along here you see the curb that's in here next to the parking lot the right-of-way line will be just out away from that curb maybe three or four inches in this area too so for all intents and purposes the curb will become the right-of-way line Okay, again, I'm standing at D Street and 4th Street, but I'm looking west. So, looking down D Street, west, this is where there was only a three inch encroachment on this wall. So we're proposing that half of a foot uh, vacation here. And again, the right of way line, the new right of way line would end up being right about along where the, where the wall is at the building. History. The, the public rights of way requested to be vacated or shown in the original plat of the city of Lewiston dated August of 1874. Both D Street and 4th Street were platted at a right of way width of 80 feet. So they were good wide city streets. In compliance with the current Lewiston vacation ordinance, Mr. Stegner has submitted the necessary applications and paid the vacation petition fees. He has also submitted a letter of consent from, from Blewett Investments, LLC, which is the only other landowner that has property adjacent to the requested vacation area. As stated by the applicant, this vacation will eliminate the encroachment of portions of the means building into the public rights of way and prevent potential real estate title problems. The public works director has determined that the minor reduction in the width of the public rights of way will not interfere with any current or future improvement plans. No public utility lines exist in the requested vacation area. As required by current city code, city staff has solicited comments from utility providers and other departments and agencies, set and advertised a public hearing for the vacation, provided notice of the public hearing by certified mail to all landowners within 300 feet of the requested vacation area, and posted the, re the requested vacation area with public hearing notice signs. Uh, as the person that was uh, listed on all of the publications and the signs, I received no comments one way or the other from anyone for this. Uh, <clears throat> concerning the request for comments, there was no comment, no objection, and no response, or no response, from all of the agencies and organizations that we sent these to, except for the Lewis and Stormwater Coordinator. And the only thing he had to say was that um, he had no objection to the requested vacation, but he wanted to take this opportunity to make this statement to the applicant. He says, given the history of flooding throughout the basement stairs, or through the basement stairs, located in the proposed vacated right-of-way fronting D Street, we encourage the owner to make some improvements of the stairs to flood-proof them against the pooling of water on the adjacent sidewalk. The area of the public right-of-way to be vacated is approximately 350 square feet with an approximate value of $1,825 based on the Nez Perce County assessed value of the adjacent commercial property. Staff recommends that the City Council approve the requested D Street and 4th Street right-of-way vacation and direct that the vacated right-of-way revert to the adjacent landowners. So, do you have any questions that I may answer? Anybody, anybody have any questions? I just... So this was back in 1874? 1874 was when the plat was done. This was the original plat, first plat of Lewiston, is where so this is located. Apparently a property pin may have been mislocated due to prehistoric um, uh, engineering measurement devices. I've looked, I've looked at the original notes of the surveyor, E.B. True. He set uh, wooden stakes instead of any kind of iron pins at the time. So. Who knows? Long time ago, a lot of history, and when you think about it, the Means Building wasn't built for close to 30 years after the plat, the original plat was done. So it was a long time. Okay. Any other questions? 
Councillor Collins. This may be a, a silly question. Why, why are we why are we hearing about this now? Did somebody notice we were three inches and in over and 15 inches over? Or somebody's looking to sell the property? Or um, I can't answer what's happening with that. Um, you may that may be a, a fair question for the for Dave Stegner, who's representing the the group here tonight. You would clear title. Yeah, I mean, it's an important thing to have clear title, whether you're in the middle of, a, of any kind of a process with your property. And as soon as you identify that, if you're, if you're uh, a diligent landowner, you'll want to clear it up. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Hayers. Mm -hmm. The applicant's here this evening. Mr. Stegner, would you like to come up and say anything? Name and address for the record, please. Thanks, Mr. Mayor and, and City Council. Uh, my name is David Stegner. Uh, my uh, address is 2624 Grandview Drive in Clarkston, Washington. Uh, I'm one of uh, four brothers that owns the Means Building on 313 D Street in Lewiston. Um, I'd like to thank Dan Hayhurst for the excellent presentation that he made. I, I don't really think I can add anything to what he's already said, but um, we uh, appreciate your consideration of the application, and, and uh, if you have any questions of me, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Stegner. Okay, at this point in time, we'll go ahead and open up the public hearing. Is there anybody that wishes to speak for or against this application for vacation of strips of right away? Okay, nobody for, nobody against? I guess there's no point in rebuttal, sir. <laughs> okay, but this time I guess we'll go ahead and close the public hearing. And uh, I guess I'd entertain a motion to approve the vacation of the right of way. So move. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Okay, seeing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries seven to zero. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, next up is public hearing AP 01-14. Um, due to a conflict of interest, I'm going to turn this over to Pro Tem Johnson. Thank you. Let me remind you, if your conflict of interest is due to an ex party contact with somebody that you need to disclose who you had contact with, when you had contact, the nature of the, okay. of the conversation. Uh, so. With the appellant, Mr. Beckley. And I can't give you the exact dates, but we've had several discussions. So at this time, I will excuse myself. If you feel that you cannot be fair, then you should recuse yourself. I think it could be fair, but I think it would be inappropriate, if that's all right, with the council. OK. I'm going to go sit up in the cheap seats. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Here, you better have that. As the mayor said, uh, we're moving on to public hearing AP 0114, request of the city council to either uphold or overturn a ruling of the city of Lewiston Community Development Department and subsequently upheld by and on appeal to the Planning and Zoning Commission that the conduct of the home occupation for Guy Peterson's GP racing suspension at 1024 Airway Avenue complies with the zoning code. Uh, so. I may have to excuse myself from this vote, recluse my, I guess the term is recluse myself. I may have had inappropriate contact today with both parties. I went up to Airway Drive and visited the site, which is against, I believe, against the rules. I had contact with both the owner of the business and Mr. Beckley both, and I realize that is uh, that it's inappropriate for a meeting such as this. And uh, again, I apologize to the city council for my actions and 
city attorney, I uh, take this under advisement that I uh, use your judgment, but uh, I don't think my visit will affect my vote. But again, it, it gave me information that was not available to the rest of the members of the council. Is that, if that information is information you can share with the council, then you should do so. But the question is whether or not you believe you can be fair in your decision. But um, you need to disclose who you talk to, when you talk to them, and the nature of the conversations. So. Yeah. Disclose that right now? Yes. Um, I, disc I visited with the owner, Guy. Help me with the last name, please. Mr. Peterson. And I had that contact today at about uh, 1, 1 o'clock. And shortly after that, I also had it with Mr. Beckley as he was arriving at his home. I walked across the street and introduced myself and just uh, and asked a few questions. And that took place at about 1.15, 1.30 today. And the nature of the conversation? nature of the conversation was simply to gather information and indicate that I was here to invest. I used the term investigate for tonight's meeting to gather information. So. Again, I am probably privy to information that the rest of the members do, do not do not have. So I, I probably I, I feel I need to recluse myself. If you feel you do, then you should. Yeah. Do I join the mayor up there? You may join the mayor. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Blake. How do we keep this up? So, for the order of this uh, this hearing, we'll first hear from the appellant, uh, Mr. Beckley. Uh, then we'll hear from the opposition, Mr. Peterson, and then finally a rebuttal from Mr. Beckley. Uh, I have been informed by the city attorney, Jamie Shropshire, that uh, uh, we will not be accepting public comment for this hearing. Uh, before we hear from Mr. Beckley, uh, Mr. Bennett, do you want to introduce the hearing? or? Um, I think Mr. Plaskon is going to do the introductions on the case. He was okay. the uh, member of the Community Development Department who yeah, worked on the original staff determination and made the presentation to the Planning and Zoning Commission on Appeal. Thank you. Mr. Plaskin. While he's coming down, let me explain to the council, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem and the councilman. This is truly an appellate hearing, and we should start to treat them as appellate hearings as opposed to open public hearings. And so in an appellate hearing, you hear from the appellant, you hear from the opposition, and then the appellant has it. Instead of opening it up to any kind of public comment, because then you take comment that wasn't heard by the Planning and Zoning Commission or the administrator when they made their decision. So uh, it's my fault for not trying to rein that in a little closer in the last couple of ones we've had, but that's the way we're going to start treating appellate hearings. Thank you. Thank you. So there's some history to this case, um, actually dating to 2003. Um, but I guess I'll start more recent than that and kind of move backwards. Um, staff uh, received complaints about GP racing um, most recently beginning in the spring of this year. Um, those complaints were primarily investigated by our code, enfor code enforcement officer. Um, I believe uh, one violation of the home occupation rules was found having to do with a sign um, the business owner of the home occupation, Mr. Peterson, was given opportunity to remedy that. My understanding is that <clears throat> that sign violation uh, was remedied. Um, there had been other complaints filed. Um, to my understanding, um, there was no proof found of any other violations of the home occupation rules or other rules having to do with home occupation business licensing. Um, I myself visited the property um, after having uh, rendered the determination that the business was not in violation of the city code um, because it had, that determination had been appealed to the Planning and Zoning Commission. So I visited the property myself, having had previously relied on the code enforcement officers' investigations. When I was there, I didn't find any proof of violations of the home occupation or other city codes um, relative to, to GP racing. Um, so the Planning and Zoning Commission conducted a public hearing on the matter on August 13th. Um, heard from the appellant, heard from the um, business owner. Um, I believe 
I apologize because I, I didn't actually make that presentation to the Planning and Zoning Commission because I was out of town. It doesn't look like there was public testimony outside uh, the two primary parties, except for one letter that was received from another neighbor, um, and that was included in uh, your packets for tonight's hearing. Oh, there was testimony um, from another neighbor at the hearing, at least two of them, it looks like, three of them. Shows up on page six of the Planning and Zoning Commission hearing minutes, hearing meeting minutes. The result of the, the hearing at the Planning and Zoning Commission level was that um, there was no proof of any violations of the city code by GP Racing and that the staff determination was upheld and that the business uh, would be allowed to continue. So that decision um, is now being appealed to the city council level um, by the same complainant um, whom is in, who, who is in the audience uh, tonight. I don't really have any other additional information. I will show you some maps some photos. I do have one new piece of information, though, that I just um, found out today from our community development director, um, who was um, privy to and maybe even part of the original uh, complaints and investigation and council consideration uh, about GP, Lace, GP Racing's home occupation license in 2003. And that new piece of information that I got was that the home occupation uh, code section that lists motorcycle repair as not being permitted was not added to the city code until after GP Racing obtains it, obtained its original home occupation license. So the, the order of events was GP Racing uh, applied for and obtained a home occupation license uh, for motor motorcycle suspension um, parts work and um, at that time motor motorcycle repair was not explicitly prohibited as a home occupation auto repair was motorcycle repair was not um, they were given the license and in 2002 was the first license that was issued uh, complaints came in <coughs> city council upheld um, the, the uh, determination in 2003 that GP Racing was compliant. Then later, no motorcycle repair was added to the city code. Um, but subsequent to that, GP Racing has continually uh, renewed their license um, as, I guess, what you would call a grandfathered um, business, maybe. So wanted to make sure you were aware of that. Just want to give you a little bit of orientation here. This is an aerial photograph of the neighborhood. North is up. This is Airway Avenue. GP Racing is located here at 1024 Airway. Um, this is the uh, home on the property. This is the detached garage shop building um, that was constructed in 2009, I believe. The house was built first, and the shop came uh, a number of years <coughs> after that. The closest neighbor uh, to the home occupation uh, is located back here at 1022 Airway Ave. I'm unaware of any complaint or complaints by that property owner, but their home is only about 35, maybe 40 feet at most away from the shop that the, the home occupation is conducted out of. This is school property. Uh, the complainant's residence is right across the street, directly across the street from GP Racing. Racing uh, Mike Beckley's residence is here at 1019 Fairway Ave, I believe. This is a photograph looking at 1024 Airway Avenue. Um, so this is Airway Avenue. This is a sign that meets the uh, home occupation size requirement for home occupation. The driveway leading back to the shop building from which the business is conducted. And this is the existing home on the property. 
the front wall here uh, to the right of the garage door is actually a small office that's part of the same building, but it's partitioned off from the shop area. This is also looking at um, the subject property from Airway Avenue. Just shows the uh, concrete block wall that uh, Mr. Peterson built around the property. This is looking the other direction. This is looking north from in front of the shop down the driveway of 1024 Airway Avenue. I believe this is Mr. Beckley's residence here. This is uh, another photograph of the shop itself, but much closer. This is just a closer photograph of the sign for the home occupation. This is a photograph of the, of the uh, inside of the shop area, the primary part of the shop area. And this is also another part of the shop area. Um, so the photograph here is taken from the main part of the shop area, looking to a small spot behind the office. This is the wall of, of the office that's in the same building. <clears throat> so that's the information that I have for you um, this evening. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Does council have any questions? Councilor Daniel. Joe. With, if Mr. Peterson was just applying for a license today, would he, would based on the work that's done in that business, would he be in compliance with code as well, or is it just that he's grandfathered in based on when he got his original license? What's the position of staff, I guess? I'm trying to sort that out in my head. You know, we've not defined uh, the term repair, um, but if the, the business as it's conducted today at 1024 Avenue came to me tomorrow as a brand new application with the way the code reads right now, I would probably say that it didn't qualify. It did? That it would not qualify. Follow-up question to that. Uh, GP Racing's business license is renewed every year, you said, right? So Correct. it's still renewed in its original form. So therefore, it wouldn't be in violation of the ordinance. Right. It, it, apparently, it's been looked at consistently since 2004 when the code was changed as a grandfathered situation. Thank you. Does the council have any other questions for Mr. Plaska? Councilor Daniel. Is that typical of most licenses? You, they're reviewed based on their original? Yes, unless there is some... Um, significant change to the operation of the business, which would cause us to look at it more closely, um, then yes, it would just be um, renewed. Councilor Randall. Uh, my understanding of the, uh, of the zoning ordinance 3071, which was in effect at that time, when they first issued the first license in 2002. Uh, a home occupation had to be within the same building. Now that picture showed where the occupation was in a separate building from the home. So I don't think that would uh, fall under that category as a home occupation. Um, it would, I think it would be more appropriate if it were to fall under a non-conforming use. And so I'm thinking that somewhere along the line, some wires got crossed and uh, in the, the uh, particular title for that use was inappropriate. They started to use the, uh, not, to mention, not to say that it couldn't be grandfathered, I'm just saying that it's 
that it's not a home occupation. And I believe if it were actually a home occupation, that it would be in violation because it didn't win meet the criteria. Mr. Plaston. That's a very good observation um, about the code um, as it existed in 2002. Um, however, since GP Racing, well, when GP Racing first obtained its home occupation license, that detached shop was not there, and the operation, I believe, was conducted out of the garage that was attached to the house, which I believe was allowed at the time. And then subsequent to that, the code was amended to expand the allowances for home occupations to be in detached garages as well. Thank you. Does the council have any other questions? Councilor Daniel. So just to clarify, it's staff's position that GP Racing is grandfathered based on their original license. Is that? That's, that's based on the question of whether or not the business qualifies as a home occupation, yes. The other question that is being asked, I guess, is, is the conduct of the business compliant with the rules for conducting home occupation? And staff have, have not been able to document violations um, at least none that have not been corrected. Councilor Ren. Okay, when they added on the garage that the at the current situation, was that business license for that at garage issued after the new zoning ordinances came into effect, or was it? issued before the new zoning ordinance came into effect because the well, reason I'm asking this is, is if the old ordinance was in effect when they got the license and then they added on or built a separate garage that would have nullified its home uh, occupation and it would have had to gone they, and then you would have had to gone to the new ordinance when it came about and re reissued it on a separate, different uh, category. I mean, <clears throat> it would have had to been something like, well, actually, it would lose its home ordinance or home occupation uh, exemption. That's what it would have lost. Unless the new law said that that was included. Is that? The new law say it was included, and they were issued a license on that. Uh, I'm not sure if we understand the question, but um, what I'm saying is, it was the addition done after the new ordinance came into effect? The addition, you mean the detached garage? The detached garage, yes. I'm not sure about the exact dates of the issuance of the permit for the detached garage versus the code amendment to allow the operation of a home occupation in a detached garage. I know they were very close in time, probably within a year apart. Um, yeah. Once the codification to allow home occupations in a detached garage occurred, um, Mr. Peterson would have been allowed by right to move his business from the attached garage to the detached garage. Council, have any other further questions for Mr. Plaskin? Hearing none, thank you, Mr. Plaskin. We'll go ahead and open this public hearing and hear first from the appellant, Mr. Beckley. Is Mr. Beckley here? Uh, thank you for your consideration. <clears throat> Same thing with the uh, planning and zoning 
this is the first I've heard in five years of making complaints that there's a grandfather clause. So I'm a little bit unprepared for that. Although I can say this, I could dig it out. Every one of his business licenses since 2002, the application says, accepts small suspension parts and nothing about motorcycle repair, period, on any application. So as far as the grandfather clause, I, I, I'm kind of lost on it. I'll make this really short. The following uses by the nature of the investment or operation have a pronounced tendency, once started, to rapidly increase beyond the limits permitted for home occupation, or have a tendency to produce objectionable noise and other nuisances, and thereby impair the use and value of a residentially zoned area for residential purposes. Therefore, the uses specified below shall not be permitted as home occupation. Motorcycle repair, major or minor, including customization or painting. <clears throat> Commissioner Bateman asked how Mr. Johnson would define repair. Mr. Johnson replies that Mr. Pedersen repairs and customizes by providing specialized suspension. Commissioner Bateman asked if Mr. Pedersen is repairing motorcycles that are broken. Mr. Johnson replied yes. The other part is this, uh, am I up on the right way? Yeah. The copy of the website that shows a full service tire shop in there. And I don't think that that was ever envisioned in uh, home business, home occupations. And basically that's it. it, it the motorcycles, if he, if he had stayed with what his applications, up until this year's application, that states he receives small suspension parts, everything would be fine. But the fact is, the motorcycles come and go on trailers, on trucks, some driven in, uh, the clanging and the, uh, because those, those ramps are not quiet. Uh, there's no set business hours. And uh, the motorcycles, as far as I'm concerned, need to stop. That's all I've got. Thank you, Mr. Beckley. Council, have any questions for Mr. Beckley? Thank you. Now we'll hear from Mr. Pedersen. Guy Peterson, 1024 Airway Avenue. Uh, you know, everybody's pretty well said what I do. I, I, I you know, the, the motorcycle repair, I repair the suspensions on snowmobiles, four-wheelers, but I have never had a snowmobile or, or you know, we usually 90% of the time get uh, shocks. But uh, we added the tire repair to help void this economy to, to, to make ends meet. So that's, that's what I do. I, I, I feel that his complaint, it's, it's more of a personal matter. He's, he's came here to Idaho for three or four years, and uh, he's up in Idaho, you know. He, he came from a different state, 
and he's you know he's the only complaint that I've had. He's the only person that's complained. <clears throat> Uh, if if there was something that he could have came and talked to me about or, or changed, I you know he he won't talk to me. So I, I I don't know. I personally feel I've been kind of stalked over the last few years from him, and I I hope that ends. <clears throat> Does the council have any questions for Mr. Peterson? Hearing none, we'll hear the rebuttal from Mr. Beckley. No rebuttal from Mr. Beckley. Okay. <clears throat> then we'll officially close this hearing. Oh, uh, Councilor Daniel. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, with your indulgence, I'd like to ask Joel another question if that'd be allowed. Absolutely. Mr. Plaskin. Well, one of the uh, when I was reading the planning and zoning minutes, it sounds like one of the big issues was the um, vagueness of the term repair, and it mentions that it was going to be looked at and possibly clarified. Has that happened yet? No. Um, as I said, I wasn't at that hearing. Um, I wrote the memo about the complaint to the planning and zoning commission, but I was out of town for that, um, and it's not been brought up by the planning and zoning commission uh, to pursue that. I noticed when I read the meeting minutes, there was a mention of a, some con conflicting sentences in the code. Um, I believe it was Commissioner McGarry said that the code said that motorcycle repair was allowed, but then there was reference um, to the section that says it's, it's not. I reviewed the code after I saw that because I thought maybe it was a typo where Commissioner McGarry said that the code said it was allowed. Um, because I didn't recall seeing anything in there that said that it was. But I couldn't find that, that other sentence that was referred to. But the, the main point is, uh, to, the answer to your question is, that the Planning and Zoning Commission has not um, taken up any um, code amendment regarding the home occupation rules since that hearing. Thank you. Any other questions? Councilor Wren. Well, I just wanted to read from the uh, ordinance 4328, which came into effect. Um, it was written into effect on 2003. And page four, line nine. Home occupation means an activity, profession, or craft carried on entirely within a residence by the occupants, which activity is clearly incidental to the use of the said residence as a dwelling and does not change the residential character thereof, is conducted in such manner as not give any outward appearance of a business in the ordinary meaning of the term, so located and conducted in that the average neighbor under normal circumstances would not be aware of its existence other than for nameplate as permitted and which does not infringe upon the rights of neighboring residents to enjoy a peaceful occupancy of their homes. Uh, to me, it doesn't say anything about additional garages. It says within that residence, period. And so I don't think this is, uh, using this as a home occupation is not the appropriate um, terminology. I think it's changed its character. And like the uh, gentleman across the street is concerned about, it's ex starting to expand. It may be slow, but it's starting to expand from the, from the building where it was originally to a separate garage. Councilor Maldonado. Uh, Joel, I think you and I are probably on the same wavelength, but the portion that I have in my packet, 37-140.1, uh, general provisions, 
A home occupation is an activity, profession, or craft carried on entirely within a residence or associated accessory buildings. When was this passed? Um, I believe that was <coughs> 2009. Okay. That's, I was just curious. Thank you. Mr. Plaskin, did you have anything I further to add? I was just going to basically say what Councillor Maldonado did. Okay. Any other questions or commentary for Mr. Plaskin? I have another question for Joel. Councilor Maldonado. Okay. Uh, I know Mr. Peterson said that no, uh, he hasn't received any complaints. Has we re have we received any other complaints from anybody besides uh, Mr. Beckley? Uh, maybe the best person to answer that question would be our code enforcement officer. I have not. I'm not aware of any complaints by any other party. No. Okay. Thank you. Would you like to call our oh. code enforcement officer down? <laughs> he shook his head at me, but AJ, if you could come down, that'd be great. Sorry. <laughs> Alan Johnson, code enforcement, City of Lewiston. Uh, no. I have not received any other complaints other than one to Mr. Beckley. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Johnson? Thanks. Okay, we'll go ahead and close this public hearing. entertain a motion to either confirm, reverse, or modify the decision of the Planning and Zoning Commission or remand the matter to them with the direction for further proceeding. Councilor Daniel. I move that we confirm the decision by the Planning and Zoning Commission. Second. The motion's been moved and seconded to confirm the decision of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Do we have any discussion? Councilor Daniel. Jamie, do I need to state the reason? Do I need to state the reason for the motion in this yes. particular case? Um, based on the testimony we heard, the packet given to me, um, I am unable at this point to find any, um, to cite any specific um, code violation. And as mentioned by staff, they were unable to document any code violations. Thank you. Do we have any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of confirming the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Motion carries four to one with Mayor Kleberg and Councillor Blakey abstaining or recusing themselves. And with that, I'll hand the meeting back over to Mayor Kleberg. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Pro Tem. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to the consent agenda. I'll entertain a motion to read the consent agenda. Is, is there anybody that wants to pull anything from the consent agenda? Okay. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 to 0. Accepting the minutes of the October 20th, 2014 Planning and Zoning Commission, October 21st, 2014 Solid Waste Advisory Commission, and the October 1st, 2014 Transportation Advisory Commission. Approving Resolution 2014-68 by title only. A resolution approving a contract for fire protection between the City of Lewiston and Lyle Skinner, authorizing and directing the Mayor and City Clerk to execute and attest respectively set agreement and providing an effective date. Approving resolution 2014-35 by title only. A resolution accepting and approving a dedication of right of way from 823D Street LLC to the city of Lewiston for public use and providing an effective date. 
Approving Resolution 2014-36 by title only. A resolution accepting and approving a dedication of right-of-way from Arthur G. and Donna M. Milton, husband and wife, to the City of Lewiston for public use and providing an effective date. Approving Resolution 2014-37 by title only. A resolution accepting and approving a dedication of right-of-way from David C. Howell, a single man, to the City of Lewiston for public use and providing an effective date. Approving Resolution 2014-38 by title only. A resolution accepting and approving a dedication of right-of-way from Janice L. Buck, a single woman, to the City of Lewiston for public use and providing an effective date. Approving Resolution 2014-39 by title only. A resolution accepting and approving a dedication of right-of-way from Dale Marshall and Lisa Marshall, husband and wife, to the City of Lewiston for public use and providing an effective date. Approving Resolution 2014-40 by title only. A resolution accepting and approving a dedication of right-of-way from Gary C. Chase and Bethany M. Chase, husband and wife, to the City of Lewiston for public use and providing an effective date. And approving the vouchers payable dated October 9, 2014 through October 23, 2014 in the amount of $2,891,669.13. Okay, counselors, the consent agenda has been read. I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as read. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 to 0. Thank you. Okay, moving on to the active agenda. Uh, this will be the second reading of Ordinance 4616. Amending the City Code, Section 31-85, in parens D, providing for the naming of streets by resolution. I entertain a motion to read Ordinance 4616 for the second time. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, 7-0. Approving the second reading of Ordinance 4616 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Lewiston amending Lewiston City Code, Section 31-85D, providing for the naming of streets by resolution and providing an effective date. Thank you, Carrie. Okay, uh, next up is ordinance, second reading of Ordinance 4619. This is amending City Code Section 24-1, providing for an exception to discharging firearms if in defense of persons or property. I'll entertain a motion to read for the second time Ordinance 4619. So moved. Second. By title only, suspending the rules. Thank you. Motion in the second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. <coughs> Excuse me. Approving the second reading of Ordinance 4619 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Lewiston amending Lewiston City Code, Section 24-1, providing for an exception to discharging firearms if in defense of persons or property and providing an effective date. Okay. Thank you, Carrie. And next up is vouchers payable to Albertsons from 10-9-14 through 10-23-14 in the amount of $57.99. I'll entertain a motion to approve vouchers payable to Albertsons with Councilor Daniel abstaining. So moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 6-0. One. Well, that's it for our active agenda this evening. Oh, I got the wrong slip. Okay. Well, we're, well, we've, we're done with the active agenda. Now we're on to unfinished and new business. Certainly. First up would be city council comments. Do we have any this evening? Councilor Blakey. Tomorrow's a holiday, so I remind anyone who intends to, to attend the URA meeting, it'll be on Wednesday. It'll be at 12 o'clock City Hall. 
There will be two presentations scheduled, one uh, on the inc uh, incubator building concept, and the other presentation will be on the food processing concept. And both of those will be uh, right in the very beginning of the meeting. So attend anybody who has an opportunity out there in the community to attend the meeting at 12 o'clock in the City Hall, Wednesday. Thank you. Councilor Daniel. I may be attending the URA meeting as well. Is there any other counselors that are going that we may need to uh, do we need to publish that if we get a quorum? I'm sort of thinking about it myself. Anybody else? Okay. But thanks for asking. That's what is the case on that, Jamie? If four of us were at the URA meeting, we since he's on the it's board. A meeting. Okay. Not, not that you're we're taking not any action on anything, other. but we just noticed the fact that there'll be a quorum present. Okay. So. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Also, I'd like Council to remind Randall. people that there will be a VA hospital appreciation up there at the VA hospital 2 o'clock tomorrow. Okay. Any other comments? Councilor Collins. Uh, I think related to that, I would just like to express a, a sincere thank you to our veterans for all that they do. Um, I had two grandfathers that served in World War II that uh, I was either too old or too immature to understand the sacrifices that they made at that time and the 50 years after. And I want to say thank you and challenge everybody else to thank a vet tomorrow. Okay, I've got a couple of comments. Uh, Got to attend the Veterans Day Parade on Saturday. It was fairly well attended. Uh, city Manager and I and uh, Councilor Emeritus Curran joined us <laughs> at the corner of 5th and Main Street. And Councilor Randall was there. I uh, got to see the chief in a military jeep waving at the crowd. And, and uh, Mr. Beckley was also in a, a float, uh, both of them vets of the Vietnam War. Um, again, I. Second, Councilor Collins' comments, you know, thank you everybody for your service if you're a veteran. Um, one thing I can't say enough of or thank them enough is uh, Bruce and Joy Finch. They're uh, hosting lunch for all veterans tomorrow at uh, several of their restaurants. There was a nice ad in the paper today. These folks give back to the community a lot, and it's a free meal. For, uh, for the vets, uh, Main Street, uh, Zanies, um, trying to think, Arby's and the Taco Times. Um, basically, they've just opened up their, their business to the veterans of this community. And uh, I really, really want to commend them for it. I know it's not inexpensive, but uh, they're happy to do it. They do it on a monthly basis, but you know, on Veterans Day, they do make a, a little bit bigger, bigger push and provide these folks with a nice meal. Um, Keeping in that theme, I was invited to, uh, by the director up at Juniper Meadows to uh, attend their Veterans Day celebration. And they have quite a few infirm vets up there that are getting up there and I will be stopping by there. It's at two o'clock and uh, I know most of the, uh, the care facilities here in town have some sort of program and stuff. I just happen to be invited to that one. So I'll be attending and look forward to it. Any other comments? Mr. Bennett, city manager comments? Well, since we're, we're talking about veterans, I, I would uh, say that I, I'm proud to have been at the parade. It was a great parade. There were uh, many floats and, uh, and people in vehicles and marching bands and, and people there out to celebrate on the street. It was a, it was a beautiful day. And, and as an Army veteran myself, I, I uh, appreciated it very much. Uh, and of course, Chief Orr was our uh, uh, Grand Marshal, if you will, of the, uh, of the parade. And um, I'd be remiss if, if I didn't, uh, on his behalf, uh, note that today, November 10th, is the 239th anniversary of the United States Marine Corps, which is established November 10th, 1775. Semper Fi, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> And nobody was written a ticket for throwing candy from a float. <laughs> thank you, Councilor Daniel. Thank you, Councilor Daniel. Because, no, seriously, I mean, there, there was so much candy being chucked at these, and the kids were having a great time, you know. So, appreciate it. Uh, 
Moving on to advisory board and commission appointments. Do we have any this evening? I know we had received a couple of applications for historic preservation. Historic <coughs> preservation. Do we need to take action on that? That would be wonderful if you're prepared to do that. I'm not the liaison. I we have I, meetings? The meeting was last Thursday and I was not at that meeting. Okay. Can we do it at the next meeting? Okay. When's their next meeting? Sure. So it'll be twice. after ours. Oh, when is their next meeting yeah. or our next meeting? Yeah, theirs. I think theirs is oh, until December. Yeah, ju yeah, just once a month, actually. Yeah, it's in December. Okay. Yeah. So we have time to get a mm -hmm. quorum for them. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Just want to remind Counselor. people we have three yeah. vacancies on the Solid yes. Waste Commission. Yes, three vacancies. Uh, Doug Black recently resigned after many years of service on that. So. Anybody's interested in being part of the, the uh, Solid Waste Advisory Commission, please get hold of Carrie at City Hall. And let's see, next up, work session agenda topics. Do we have any this evening people want to bring up? We will uh, have a work session on December 1st. Uh, the focus of that meeting is going to be on the community park. Uh, we will get an update also from uh, Public Works Director Chris Davies on the um, the storm drain uh, issue that was raised at the uh, last uh, work session. The water line project? Was no. Water line? Okay. Water line, not storm drain. Yeah. Storm drainage was it? Yes. Okay. All right. So we'll have a brief update on those uh, Which projects. Which storm drains are we discussing? <clears throat> Mayor, that was the uh, up at Tri State and at the Stinker Station. Oh, that's correct. correct. The curb. There was situation. a water line project is the one on... Uh, Southway. Southway, right. Okay. Okay. Well, that concludes that. Uh, next up would be uh, to entertain a motion to go into executive session. RE personnel under Idaho Code Section 67-2345 and parens 1B. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The okay, motion carries seven to zero. We will not be taking action when we come out. Is that correct? Or are we right. taking action? No, okay. no action. Okay, thank you. We'll take a brief recess and three minutes, four minutes. Okay, thank you.